Okay, let's uh, let's jump right in. Imagine this for a second. One of the biggest, maybe the biggest, leaps toward an HIV vaccine might have just happened this year. Yeah, and you probably didn't even hear about it, right? It's kind of wild. Exactly. It's uh, surprising, and it really sets the stage for our deep dive today. Absolutely. We're going to be you know, digging into the sources you sent over, pulling out the really key insights. We want to understand the real, actual progress researchers are making. Worldwide progress. Right, worldwide, towards a vaccine that could maybe finally end HIV. And our mission here, for you listening, is pretty straightforward. Get you up to speed, quickly but thoroughly. We'll cover the top breakthroughs, what's actually happening in HIV vaccine research. And crucially, why it all matters. Like, what's the real impact? and how knowing this stuff helps you, you know, take charge of your own health. Definitely. And it's important to um, acknowledge the reality, right? Even with amazing tools like PRE-P. PRE-P, that's the pre-exposure prophylaxis, the daily pill. Yeah, exactly. The daily med that prevents infection. Even with pre p and the treatments we have, well, over 1.2 million people in the U.S. are living with HIV. Still. It's a huge number. It is. And we're still seeing around, what, 35,000 new infections every year? So a vaccine is more than just like another drug. It's not just prevention. No, it's hope, real hope, especially for communities dealing with, you know, stigma, lack of access to good health care. A real breakthrough vaccine could change everything. It could genuinely stop transmission globally. Think about teen girls, LGBTQ plus folks, people in underserved areas. It's potentially transformative on a global scale, not just small steps. Right, a game changer. And that urgency, that hope, it brings us to these uh, five big breakthroughs your sources are highlighting. Okay, five game changers. Yeah, think of them like like puzzle pieces finally starting to click together, giving us a real picture of how we might actually win this fight. Right, let's get into the first one. Okay, first up, the mRNA HIV vaccine. It's moved into phase two trials. mRNA, Moderna, we all know that name from COVID vaccines. Exactly, and they've really pushed forward with their candidates, mRNA 1644 and mRNA 1574. They're in phase two now. Phase two. That sounds significant. Oh, it is. It's one of the most advanced mRNA HIV efforts we've seen so far. And the mRNA platform itself, it's not just like slightly better. It changes the whole game for vaccine development. How so? Well, it's faster, yeah. much faster to develop things. It's cheaper yeah. and it's super adaptable. Adaptable, meaning it can handle different strains because HIV mutates like crazy. Yeah. yeah. Right. That was always the problem. Make the crucial part. Yes. Traditional vaccines struggled with that rapid mutation, but mRNA, it works differently. It allows researchers to target multiple strains, even pivot quickly if needed. So it's teaching the body's immune system in a new way to recognize HIV's tricks early on. Precisely. It's training the immune response to see those early attack patterns rather than chasing a target that's constantly changing shape. It's about building a uh, smarter defense system. Okay, so smarter defense with mRNA. But that adaptability you mentioned, is HIV's mutation still a massive hurdle even for mRNA? I mean, compared to COVID. Uh, that's a really important question. Yes, HIV's diversity is still, well, a beast, much more complex than COVID. We're not just talking one virus, but millions of slightly different versions inside just one person sometimes. Wow. So the adaptability of mRNA is vital, but the target is still incredibly slippery. The vaccine has to be clever enough to induce a response that sees past all that variation. Got it. So mRNA is one huge piece. Mm. What's next? You mentioned broadly neutralizing antibodies, BNABs. Yes. Breakthrough number two. And this is something researchers have been chasing for, well, decades. They've actually triggered BNABs in humans. Triggered them. Yeah. So trials funded by IAVI and the NIH back in 2025, apparently, according to the sources, they successfully got volunteers' bodies to produce these BNABs using something called a germline targeting approach. Germline targeting. Sounds <laughs> complex. It kind of is, but think of it like this. BNABs are the golden key because they can hit many, many different HIV variants, not just one. Okay, the master key. Exactly. And this approach, germline targeting, it basically teaches the immune system's early cells, the B cells, how to recognize fundamental parts of HIV. So they're sort of prepped, ready to make these powerful, broad antibodies later on. And they managed to induce multiple types of these BNABs in people. For the first time, yes, multiple BNABs in healthy humans. That's huge. Because that opens the door to, like a cocktail vaccine, something that covers strains all over the world. U.S., Africa, Asia. That's the goal. A truly broad spectrum defense. One vaccine, potentially, 
offering protection against the virus's global diversity. Which makes sense because this is a global problem needing global solutions. Absolutely. And that actually leads us perfectly into breakthrough number three. It's all about that global effort, specifically in South Africa. Yeah, right. South Africa's mRNA vaccine rollout preparation. Yeah, the MRRC, South Africa's Medical Research Council, they're actively gearing up for local mRNA vaccine production. They're working with tech transferred from Moderna, collaborating with the WHO, Africa, CDC. It's a big partnership. Huge. And the goal is clear. Make and distribute HIV vaccines for Africa and maybe even beyond. Now, why is this specifically relevant for, say, you listening in the U.S.? Because Africa is often where these vaccines get tested first on a large scale. High prevalence rates, strong clinical trial infrastructure, success there, that can seriously speed up approval and manufacturing back in the U.S. So progress there directly impacts timelines here. It's all connected. Totally connected. It's global synergy in action. Okay, so we have mRNA platforms triggering BNABs, global production prep. <sighs> What's number four? Something about AI? Yes. Breakthrough number four, AI-powered vaccine design. Researchers uh, at, at Scripps and Duke are using artificial intelligence in a really cool way. Uh -oh. They're using AI to map the outer shell of HIV, the envelope proteins, in super fine detail, like incredible 3D model. And what does that let them do? It lets them find new spots, stable places on the virus where antibodies can actually latch on effectively, weak spots that maybe weren't obvious before. Ah, so AI is like this super microscope finding the chinks in HIV's armor. That's a great way to put it. It helps design vaccine components, immunogens that are more stable, more predictable, and hopefully much more potent. And the big win with AI is speed, right? Massive speed advantage. These AI tools can potentially shave years off development time compared to traditional methods. Smarter design, faster results. It's a quantum leap for discovery. Okay, that's four. What's the final breakthrough? This one sounds a bit different. It is slightly different. Breakthrough five is the AGT-103T therapeutic vaccine. It's now expanding trials to include people already living with HIV. So not preventive, but therapeutic yeah. for people who already have the virus. Exactly. It's developed by American Gene Technologies, AGT. It's kind of like a gene therapy approach. Gene therapy. How does that work for HIV? Well, it aims to train the person's own immune system to suppress the virus effectively, but without needing daily antiretroviral therapy or RT. Oh, without daily pills. That's the goal. The early results from 2025 showed some patients managed to keep the virus suppressed for several months off RT. Wow. That's that's huge. Yeah. That sounds like a functional cure. It represents that potential, yes. A functional cure. Freedom from daily meds, freedom from side effects. Imagine the quality of life improvement. Especially here in the U.S., where HIV is mostly managed long-term, like a chronic condition, this could be a pathway to... Well, suppression without the daily burden. Precisely. So if we kind of pull back and look at all five. Yeah, let's synthesize. What's the big so what here? The big picture is profound hope. These advances go way beyond just pre prep and current art. They represent a multi-pronged attack prevention and potential cure. And the potential to really slash new infections, right? Especially in younger people, high-risk groups. A vaccine could actually stop the spread. Dramatically reduce it, yes. And what's also key is that accessibility seems to be baked in more this time. You've got African labs gearing up, U.S. trials moving fast, the scalability of mRNA. It feels like there's a real push to avoid the inequities we've seen with other health breakthroughs. Let's hope so. These breakthroughs really bridge that gap between preventing it, treating it, and potentially curing it, moving us closer to actually ending the HIV epidemic. Okay, but there's a catch, isn't there? Or rather, a crucial piece we need right now. There is. And it's simple, but vital. All this amazing science, all this future potential. It works best when people know their HIV status today. Testing. It always comes back to testing. It's still our most powerful tool right now. Early detection literally saves lives, gets people into care sooner, keeps them healthier. And helps protect partners too. Stops the chain of transmission. Absolutely. Which brings up the type of test. Right. You wanted to mention the HIV RNA test specifically. Yes, because this technology is key. It can detect the virus itself, the RNA, often within just days of exposure. Days. That's way earlier than older tests, the antibody or antigen ones, which could take weeks. Exactly. That super early detection is crucial. It allows for immediate decisions about health, about management, about preventing transmission, long before someone might even feel sick. So knowing your status early is paramount. Okay, looking ahead then, what should we, what should you listening be watching for? Definitely keep an eye on Moderna's mRNA vaccine. 
phase three trials could start late 2025. That's a massive milestone. Okay, phase three for mRNA. What else? Look for more news on those multi-strain BNAB combinations. Combining those broadly neutralizing antibodies could be incredibly powerful. Tackling that diversity issue head on. Right. Yeah. And watch the therapeutic vaccines like AGT1 or 3D, how they progress towards, you know, potential FDA approval. It's a really dynamic space right now. Lots to track. So final thought then. Beyond the incredible science. Yeah, beyond the labs and trials, maybe think about this. How do we normalize HIV testing? Make it truly routine, zero stigma, just part of regular health care for everyone. And alongside that. We need to collectively push for vaccine equity. Make sure that when these amazing breakthroughs finally arrive, they don't just reach a few. They need to be accessible for everyone, everywhere. That's the ultimate goal, right? <laughs>